Hi, I'm Asaf Shelley, a Microsoft MVP, and we're here in the Microsoft MVP Summit 2008. I have Ed here with me. Uh, he's doing all the parallel stuff for Microsoft. He's on the dev team. And the first thing I want to do, Ed, if you can uh, tell us why, why do we need all these uh, parallel extensions? We, we do that. All the multi-threading, all the tasks, why do we need that? Well, for the past several years in computing, the last 25 years in computing, we've been lucky that the chip manufacturers have been able to manufacture chips that double in clock speed every 18 to 24 months. Uh, something that we refer to as, you know, kind of the free lunch, that it was really easy for a developer to just expect the performance to increase. That's so, Moore's, right? Uh, right. Moore's Law actually stated that the number of transistors would increase, and transistors are a really low-level component in the system. Well, those are still able to double uh, every 18 months, but now it's not in clock speed, because we've gotten to the part where it starts to get too hot when you use them to go faster. Instead, you could add the transistors into more cores. So if you go up to your favorite uh, computer manufacturer's website and you try to buy a computer today, you're going to see you're going to see two or more core machines available, and you can't find a one-core machine anymore. So what are these new multi-core machines? It turns out that they've taken the processors and they're multiplying them. And that's how they plan on providing more computational performance uh, in the future generations of computing. But this means that developers now have to learn a new way of programming in order to be, to be able to take advantage of this new hardware. The ways that they programmed before uh, which are called sequential programs, uh, are no longer able to take advantage of it. You take an application from five years ago, and you run it on a machine today, and it's going to run at the same speed. Uh, what you have to do is parallelize it so that you're able to run twice as fast, four times as fast. What we're going to see is that the cores keep doubling every 18 months the way clock speed was. So right now, where you're at two cores, pretty soon you'll be at 4, 8, 16, 32, people predicting 64 cores by the year 2013, and it's going to continue increasing after that. Wow. So uh, what I hear from uh, people is that uh, multi-core programming is very hard. Doing all the parallel stuff, you need to redesign the application. That's a pretty big headache, right? I mean, it is very difficult, and that's what we're working on now. Uh, turns out that today you need to know all of this complicated stuff around there are these uh, semaphores, mutexes, manual reset event. You don't know when to use one versus another. Uh, this concept count is just so high. How do you tell one thread to do this versus do that? People don't want to have to write at that low level code and only one small fraction of the population is able to do it really well today. So instead of it we don't think it's fair that only one really small set of people can do it. So we're creating new programming models to make it much easier uh, to do it. So you can focus on what you want your code to do rather than getting down to the low level of how you want to do it. Uh, one of the first things we're doing in this, uh, we call Microsoft Parallel Extensions to the .NET Framework. Uh, this creates a set of technologies uh, for providing data and task parallelism and imperative and declarative types of parallelism, making it, making it easy for developers to describe their programs in ways they already know how to and get the parallel benefits that are available in the underlying hardware. So one of the uh, uh, biggest questions that people keep asking is, can I take my uh, existing code today, which is all serial single task, and make it parallel? How, how difficult is it to make my existing code ro use all these cores that we have today? Uh, so there are a couple, couple different aspects to it. Um, the first one is just using what we have today. If um, That's not really where the hard part is. Uh, the hard part is finding where you're spending most of your time in the application and figuring out how to give it performance. Uh, we're, planning on, uh, we're planning on tools to make it easy to identify these critical sections or these hotspots in your code and figure out how to add parallelism to them um, using technologies such as parallel extensions to the .NET framework. One of the things you could do today to start preparing for this 
is uh, in uh, the most recent version of the .NET Framework, uh, .NET Framework 3.5, uh, we have a new uh, set of features called Language Integrated Query, which is when I refer to declarative programming, this is what I'm talking about. It's a SQL-like syntax that makes it very easy to express uh, what you want your program to do rather than how you want to do it. I'm going to keep like repeating that mantra. But that's important. You say, rather than adding in all these if statements and all this control flow, you say, I want to do this where this condition is true. I want to sort it in this way, and I want to return the data. Uh, if you kept all your code independent in there, so you're not what we call functionally pure, so you don't have side effects, you don't have mutations, and so on, it's really easy to parallelize that you add dot as parallel to it. Uh, you could also really easily parallelize for loops by we have a parallel for construct and you just change one line of code and you're able to take advantage of that. Uh, now this works great for embarrassingly parallel situations that don't have all of the synchronization, don't, don't have mutability, uh, that are functionally pure. Most programs today are not. So there needs to be a lot more kind of synchronization, a lot more thinking about what goes on, or you have to redesign your application in some subtle ways to make this happen. And when you're able to figure that out, which is really where you should be spending your time, rather than figuring out you know, whether you use these esoteric ideas like a mutex or a semaphore. So uh, it looks to me like this is a new era in uh, computer science, that uh, everything is going to change for us. And the first question that uh, everybody keeps asking is, uh, how can we find ourselves a way into this uh, new area? How can we go into uh, parallel computing? Well, well what, you, what you state is uh, pretty much right. Um, this is a first step in uh, in every developer being able to take advantage of parallelism, which is something that every developer is soon going to have to do in order to have well-performing programs. In order to start doing it, I suggest right now, parallel extensions to the .NET framework is available as a community technology preview. Uh, go up to msdn.com slash concurrency, uh, track to our download, download it, start playing with it. We have, we have forums, we have blogs, uh, follow what we're doing in the community, get involved, play with the CTP, send us your feedback, and the more feedback we get, the, the better we can change this to make it available for you. It's a pretty much virtuous cycle. The more you use it and tell us, the more we're able to change it to make it better to meet your needs. So you're pretty, pretty much open for uh, feedback right now? And if, uh, Very open for feedback. Always open for feedback. That's a pretty good uh, stage in a uh, product line. So I thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Asaf. An amazing experience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.